Uh, I take it you're working from home in your kitchen then? Yeah, I'm just sitting in my kitchen as usual. Excellent. Uh, how about you? I'm recording currently in my bedroom. I'm making a makeshift recording studio, carpeted room, and it's got a, it's the only spot where I, I think I won't get very much reverb. So we'll see how this goes. From Peloton Magazine, this is Aerogram Talks, presented by Penarello. Jonas Carney is the performance director of Rally Cycling. With riders all over the world managing through this pandemic, associate editor William Tracy spoke with Jonas to learn more about how the team and the riders were doing. Jonas, you've been with Rally Cycling since its inception, correct? Yeah, uh, I started with the team in the very in the the first year uh, as the cycling as the Rally Cycling's uh, performance director. If everything were normal right now, uh, what would you be doing today? If everything was normal right now, I would have just finished two one-day races in France, uh, Loire Atlantique and Cholet. The, they would have been Saturday and Sunday, two 1.1 races in France. And we would be uh, between races getting ready for Tourangelle and Adelie, which are in, uh, which would have been started in a few days. So I would be directing those one one-day races in France by myself. So instead, now, what's your day-to-day schedule like? What are you doing? Um, you know, we're still, we're still trying to stay busy with team stuff, but Mm -hmm. really we've just had to pivot and, um, focus on communicating with the athletes, making sure they have what they need, communicating with our office staff to make sure that we're doing what needs to be done via social media, things like that. And, um, it's a lot of, uh, phone and computer time, but really things have slowed down tremendously because we're not on the road. So, um, things are, things are pretty slow, but we're trying to stay busy and and do what we can do. Um, so were there any challenges in getting your riders back home, say like after it became clear that races were getting canceled and that this was a very serious situation? You know, it, it wasn't too hard to get everybody home. We were, we were pretty, pretty proactive. We, we made our decision pretty quickly Mm -hmm. and, um, we were able to get plane tickets for everyone and get everybody home. There wasn't too much complication aside from some of the athletes. A few of the male athletes were um, hoping to stay mm-hmm. in Europe, and they pretty quickly realized that it was a, not a great idea, and um, they were they were on their way home way home yeah. pretty quickly. Yeah, there was a couple of days there where some athletes felt like they wanted to stay, and I don't think that they really knew the uh, what was going to happen in in Spain at that point, and so. Um, took a couple of days for a few of the guys to really come to the conclusion they needed to get back to the United States. So in terms of uh, your riders, their training plans, what's the general strategy now? How are you guys handling that? Um, you know, we, we sort of ad- addressed that last week. You know, we're sort of flying blind. We don't really know what the first races back are going to be. We could be racing in June, could be July, could be August, who knows? So it's it's tough, but we've communicated directly with all the athletes and, you know, we're working with their coaches to come up with a strategy. I think some of the guys are approaching it in um, different ways, but ultimately for the most part, the guys have had to sort of revert back to, you know, sort of basically pretending that this is winter time, November, December, yeah. because it's very likely that we'll be racing before June. Yeah. Base miles, probably a little cross training, strengthening stuff, you know, um, I think each one of them's got a little bit of a different plan based on what they're accustomed to doing in the off season. But for the most part, they're sort of treating this like the, you know, like it, like as if it was December. Now, if races, when they finally do happen, or if they happen this year, how much time do you think you'll need at a minimum to mobilize your team, to get your staff ready, your riders, your equipment, et cetera? Well, the team, I would say the team, we probably need, we probably need a week to just ramp everything back up again. All of all our vehicles are ready to go. Mm-hmm. All of our um, our equipment is uh, either at our service course in Golden or our service course in Spain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean we're we're we could pull the trigger pretty quickly, but we feel like we're going to have a uh, fair warning. Yeah, I mean I don't, everything's not just going to ramp up real fast, so we feel like we'll probably have three four weeks advance notice at least. Um, as far as the athletes go, I think that they're they're all ready to go as well. So then, how much communication have you guys had with uh, race organizers and also the UCI? Uh, we've been receiving a few communications here or there from the UCI. Um, we've 
uh, I'd say our communication with race organizers has just been kind of patchy. Some of them have, you know, just canceled their events and gone silent. Mm -hmm. Um, some of them are still on the calendar and they're not sure what they're going to do because they're, they haven't canceled or postponed yet. And then others are actively trying to, um, reschedule. And we've received a few notifications about what dates they're looking at. So I assume that races that have been canceled in the spring are trying to solidify dates in the late summer um, or fall. And they've been probably communicating with the UCI on that. Um, Are you worried about any races maybe not being able to take this financial hit? And is that more of a concern with that for you for a domestic uh, calendar versus the international calendar? It's, it's all kind of concerning at this point, whether it be domestic races, international races, uh, teams. Um, you know, I think it's just concerning that, that um, the sport in general could, could really struggle with this, whether that's races or teams. Um, but um, hopefully most of the races on the calendar that we were you know, hoping to do for the rest of the season will, will, um, will be okay with this. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's definitely some concern that that uh, financially some other races would have to cancel, even if even if racing starts again. Yeah. Um, have you thought much about how uh, this halt in racing affects uh, signing riders for next season? Because um, if there's really no, nothing to go on, results wise or racing wise, um, riders, especially on a contract year, might have uh, have little to no actual racing to prove themselves for 2021. Yeah. You know, I think that could be, um, it could be very interesting to see how things sh- shake out. You know, some riders, some riders that are, you know, were sort of in a renewal year that really ne- needed to get results this year are not getting the opportunities that they yeah. needed. So this could be difficult on, on certain athletes in general. I think the teams will sort of make the adjustment. Everybody's in the same boat. Yeah. We all understand. Definitely. So I, I guess everybody will be sort of, if we don't race very much or at all, we'll be recruiting based off of previous year's results. Okay. If no more racing ends up happening this year, which hopefully is not the case, um, how would you rate your team's performance through the first two months? You know, I think, God, that seems like a long time <laughs> ago. A um, whole month. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, it's just, it's strange to think like, wow, we were just racing recently. Yeah. You know, I think our team was on track. We were doing a good job. Um, the way that the guys performed in um, Argentina and Colombia was, was very solid. Uh, the way that the guys raced in Saudi Arabia was good. And um, we were able to pick off a couple of nice results. Like the, um, like in Spain, the, the riders who came back from Saudi Arabia did, uh, it was, I think it was Adam DeVos who pulled a second place there at a major race in Spain at the, in sort of towards the end of February. And um, so, yeah, I think we were on track and um, it was looking promising. You know, the guys, uh, the guys, if we weren't generating the results, we were in the race, racing at the front, racing aggressively and, and, and challenging for results. So um, we, we were on track to have uh, what, what, what looked like a, a good start to the season. We hope you enjoyed this talk. Please check out our magazine at pelotonmagazine.com and subscribe to Aerogram so you don't miss an episode.